something that I noticed as I was, as we were rehearsing earlier, um, all these songs have an interesting theme and kind of relate to things that are going on currently with me right now in my life. Um, and I love the hope that this, la this song that we just sang and the one that we're about to sing, The Healing Have. Um, and there are two sections that, I, that always get my attention when I listen or sing the song. There's a part of the song that says, um, I believe in you. You took my weary heart, broken and bruised, every part you made brand new. And then um, in the second verse, if I'm going through hell, I'll be all right. I'm standing on what you promised me. Um, and it reminded me of some passages that my mom sent to me after we had a conversation. She wanted me to read some psalms that talked about not being shaken. Um, and the one that I'm going to read now is from Psalm 62. Um, it's Psalm 62, verse 6. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Um, and what I like about the commentary for this particular passage is it talks about the psalmist is probably feeling like they're sitting on a fence and they're, they're, they're teetering, but somehow they're not shaken. And uh, for me, I've got so many things that are going on and they're all happening at once. And at one point last week, I asked God, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Who do I talk to? I am so tired. I feel like I'm going around and around in this one area of my life, and it's just never ending. Um, and what I love about this passage is that it's a reminder that we always have an invitation to fully rely on God, no matter what happens. Even if we feel like we're going to be toppled, we will not be shaken. So even with what I have going on, all I have to do is just stand. And even though I feel like I'm going to fall over, I will not be shaken. I can just stand on that. So as we sing this last song, um, wherever you are, this is an invitation for you all to fully rely on God. I believe in you. Maker of stars, the sun and moon, heaven and earth designed by you. Ooh, I believe in you. Took my weary heart, broken and bruised, every part you made brand new. Ooh, even when fears try to dim my light. Yes, I believe this is true, that every time you see me through, I know I'm safe, you'll never leave, ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. even when fears try to dim my life. Feeling, you are my healing. 
Hello and welcome. My name is JJ Bond. I am one of the pastors here at Simple Church and I have the privilege of opening God's word with you today. So whether you are watching from the comfort of your home, maybe you're just listening in, we are so thankful that you decided to join us uh, on our online worship service today. If you have been with us for the last couple months and uh, the last handful of weeks, we have been working our way through the Gospel of John, and we're going to do so all the way up until Easter. And that is no different this morning. We'll be taking a look at John 14, and I'll set the table for that in just a moment. But if you have a Bible or electronic device, I want to encourage you to get there uh, now. And this, the title of this message is, I'm Coming Home. And the reason why I've titled this message, I'm Coming Home, is because I believe the heart longs for a true and better home. Our hearts are wired for a true and better home. And you've heard that saying, home is where the heart is. So as we look at John 14 uh, today, there is a lot in this one chapter, but we're going to zone in on just a few things. But before we get there, I want to actually, there's a song called I'm Coming Home. And I just want to read the lyrics to the first part of this song made famous by Diddy and Skylar Gray. And some of you are like, uh, Diddy, who is Diddy and who is Skylar Gray? Uh, just hold those thoughts and listen to the lyrics of this song because I think the lyrics to this song help to prove my point, that our hearts do long for a true and better home. So the, the first part of this song, the lyrics go like this. I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. I know my kingdom awaits and they've forgiven my mistakes. I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Tell the world that I'm coming home. I'm back where I belong. Yeah, I never felt so strong. I feel like there's nothing that I can't try. And if you with me, put your hands high. If you ever lost a life before, this one's for you. And you, and you, and you, and you. I'll be home soon. Man, I love this song, and part of the reason I like it, part of uh, my story is I'm from Northeast Ohio, and for me this was a big deal because when LeBron James came back to Cleveland, uh, this is how he arrived with this song playing in the background. The prodigal son had returned to his hometown and ultimately brought Cleveland a championship, and it was just a sweet and beautiful story. But our hearts long for a true and better home. Why? Like the answer is in the whole gospel story and we'll see the answer today in the book of John. Because if we go back to Genesis 1 through 3 and look at the creation narrative and the creation story, you'll see that God created and we believe that God created the world and everything in it was good. And man and woman walked in fellowship with God. They were at home with God in the garden. 
They had all the comforts of the garden. There was peace in the garden. They were safe in the garden. And then man and woman decided to rebel against God. And what happened? Sin and death entered into this world. And like I've said before, we do not have to look very far to know that brokenness exists in our world, that messiness exists in our world, that sin exists in this world, right? Like we, we experience hurt, we experience pain, we experience suffering, but also at the same time, we experience high highs, great joys, um, reasons to celebrate, uh, reasons to, to throw a party, right? So life, the journey of life is filled with all kinds of mixed emotions and mixed experiences, and we all have a different journey. So my aim this morning is, is this. Our hearts long for a heavenly home with the heavenly father, just like back in the garden. And the heavenly father's heart longs to be with us. That's why in the garden, when man and woman ultimately sinned against God, rebelled against God, God, the story does not end there. The story does not end with sin and death. God sends his only son into this world as a perfect reflection of who God the Father is. As a perfect, righteous, 100% God, 100% man to ultimately die on the cross because sin requires a, a payment and that payment is death. In order for life to happen, death has to happen. We see that even in the four seasons, right? So God the Father sends his only son for us because he loves us. So I want you to hear that again. Our hearts long for a heavenly home with the heavenly father, a loving, good, and perfect father. And the heavenly father's heart longs to be with us. That's why he sent his son. And if you read the story of scripture from Genesis to, Res to Revelation, it's a story of God pursuing his people. Okay, so let's look at John 14. And here is our scripture reading today, starting in verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas speaks up and he says, Thomas said to him, remember, they're around the table. Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I want you to underline and highlight that statement because that is big and that changes everything. And then he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me, and this is the theme of the Gospel of John. This is the theme of John's story that he pens. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may, at, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And I want to pause just right there. And explain that because this isn't a genie in the bottle type deal with Jesus he is going to the father he says I will do anything you ask in my name but this isn't a rub the bottle genie pops up and you get three wishes and God will give you whatever you want no when Jesus says I will do whatever you ask in my name 
what he is saying there is I will do whatever you ask that aligns with my will. So he's calling his disciples. He's calling us as we pray and ask things in Jesus name that we would submit to his will and he will accomplish his will because he is going to the father okay so three things i want to identify in this passage three things that i think um, at least god taught me and i hope god will uh, encourage you with these three things the first thing is this in verses one through five we see that jesus has revealed a heavenly home there's good news he's not going to leave us in this mess he's going to return and he's coming back for us okay and he's taking us to our heavenly home the home that our hearts long for the home that our hearts that our lives were created for okay so the first thing verses one through five jesus has revealed a heavenly home the second thing is this Jesus has revealed a heavenly father. I am in the father and the father is in me. Man, there's a lot right there, right? And this passage speaks of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And ultimately for those who believe in God, for those who put their faith and trust in God, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what empowers us to live like Jesus to love, to show kindness, to be patient, to show empathy, right? So Jesus has revealed to us a heavenly home. Jesus has revealed to us a heavenly father, right? Jesus is the perfect reflection of God the Father. So you want to understand who God is? You want to know who God is? Look at Jesus. And that's what this series has been all about. And we actually shift the title of the series right here in John 14, right? We have called this series The Way of Jesus. And we're going to end with this series with the title, Jesus is the Way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus has revealed a heavenly home. Jesus has revealed a heavenly father in verses 6 through 11. And lastly, in verses 12 through 14, we see that Jesus has revealed to us a heavenly mission, right? And he says we will accomplish even greater things than what he did. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that we're going to go out and be able to walk on water and heal sick people? No, not necessarily. What that does mean is we are called to bring heaven to this earth, to tell others about our heavenly home, to tell others about our heavenly father and live, the, live out this heavenly mission so that other people would see Jesus, not in just the words we say, but how we love and how we treat one another. So one more time, just as a reminder, Jesus has revealed in this passage a heavenly home. There's something greater out there and our hearts long for it. Whether you're an unbeliever or a believer, you know this. Our, long, our hearts long for something true and better. Our hearts long for a true and better home. You may have had a great home growing up as a kid. You may have had a really good home. You may have had a really bad home. But regardless, your heart longs for a true and better home. Your heart longs for the way it was back in the garden when man and woman walked in perfect fellowship with God. So Jesus has revealed a heavenly home. Jesus has revealed a heavenly father. And Jesus has revealed a heavenly mission. I want to end with this verse. It's been the theme of this series. It's the theme of this book. And I want to remind us, John 20, 31, it says this. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Here's the deal. Here's where the tension comes. If I choose to believe in Jesus, if I choose to trust in Jesus, if I choose to put my faith in Jesus, if I believe that what he says is true, and if I believe who he is is true, I have to count the cost. 
And here's why. Because if I choose to believe in Jesus, if I choose to trust in Jesus, I am giving up my way, I am giving up my truth, and I am giving up my life in exchange for the way, the truth, the life, which is Jesus. Now, you see this in our culture today. You see this in our world today. It's my way. I'm going to do things the way I want to do it, regardless of what it means for me and everybody else. I am going to seek out and live my truth, and I'm going to do me, right? I'm going to do my life. You got to count the cost. And not everybody is going to believe in Jesus. Jesus, God does not force himself on anyone. But through faith, through trust in Jesus, he is the way, the truth, the life. You want to experience life to the fullest? You want to experience life eternal? Jesus is the way. So we have to wrestle with this question. Is this true? Does Jesus really love me? Is Jesus really trustworthy? And will he come back? Well, look what it says back in verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Jesus is coming back. And you want to know what my kids, the first thing they want to know when mommy and daddy go on a date night, um, or mommy and daddy decide to leave the house to run an errand together to get some time alone, and we leave the kids at home, you want to know what they want to know? When, we, when will we be back? And if we give them a certain time, if we say, hey, we'll be back by 8 p.m., you know what they're expecting? That we're going to be back by 8 p.m. And you know what? Even if we text them and we're going to be late, you know what they reply? But mom and dad, you said you'd be back by 8 p.m. They hold us to that. Why? Because they long to be with mommy and daddy. They love being in our home. Their hearts long for our home. Y'all, there's a true and better home. I want to illustrate this point by showing you a video. Man, it pulls at my heart strings every time. And it's a compilation of soldiers returning home and embracing their loved ones. It may be a mother and son, it may be a mother and daughter, it may be a father and son, and it may be just friends. But every time I come across one of these videos where a father and son are reunited, it tugs at my heartstrings. Why? Because our hearts long for it. Our hearts long for relationship. Our hearts long for a true and better home. So check out this short video and we'll wrap up. Allegheny High School, where his son Caleb is exercising, he sneaks in. All right, y'all, um, I don't know about you, but that gets me every time, uh, watching the, the parents embrace their kids, watching friends embrace one another. Um, why? Because we long to be with our loved ones. And there's something in us that longs for a true and better home. 
just like it was back in the garden. Our hearts long to be with our loving, gentle, good, and perfect Heavenly Father. The quote at the end of that video, it says, not a dry eye in the house, as the father and daughter were reunited again. One day, Jesus is coming back, y'all, and we will experience no more pain, no more suffering, no more sin, no more death, but we will be with him, and for those who trust and put their faith in him, we will be together for eternity. A recreation, a restoration, a new heaven, and new earth. So I leave you with this. I'm going home. I'm going home. We're called as believers to tell the world about this home. Let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. I know his kingdom awaits and he's forgiven my mistakes. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm called to tell the world about this home with my words, with my deeds, with my love. Amen. Have a blessed day.